Hi Radical Ones, Radical Ryan Hunter here, and I wanted to do a little video today on Dark Shadows. The love of this show started for me in the fifth grade. A matter of fact, the theme song to the show was listed in my yearbook that year as my favorite song. That was the year I also used to have this companion book that I used to bring along everywhere I went to read about episodes that I'd yet to see at the time, or to this day, not at all. This gothic soap opera lasted over 1,225 episodes on the ABC network from June 27th, 1966 to April 2nd of 1971. So the summer right before fifth grade, when the Sci-Fi Channel was still spelled Sci-Fi and not what we have today, there was two episodes of this classic soap opera airing each afternoon. By chance, after days of watching the story continue and getting more and more interested in the characters and the plots, I brought it up, and it turned out to be my mother's favorite soap opera growing up. She and many fans I've heard over the years state the same thing, remembering each day running home from school not to miss a moment of that day's episode. That year, I got my whole family invested, and for my mother, reinvested, in the continuing adventures of Barnabas and the entire Collins family, which I would set a timer for on our VHS player to record the double episodes airing each day. I collected books, CDs, VHS tapes of the older black and white episodes, anything I could get at the time, and I lived in that world of dark shadows for many years. So, some people might know the name of this property based on the Tim Burton film from a few years ago. Well, in the words of Mariah Carey, I don't know her. All joking aside, I do like that there was something new with the property, but I'm still waiting for a serious take on Dark Shadows. And actually researching this, I had heard that the CW was making a continuation of the Collins family called Dark Shadows Resurrection, but unfortunately, CW has decided not to pick up this pilot. Dark Shadows seems to have a history with pilots that are made or incarnations that come along, one in the early 90s that only lasted for a season, as well as back in 2004 when the WB was going to do another take on Dark Shadows. Again, nothing saw the light of day. Let's go back to when the show first jumped to the big screen with 1970's House of Dark Shadows. Now this movie, as well as its sequel, actually took cast members from the series at the time and condensed the storyline of Barnabas the Vampire and his transformation, thanks to Dr. Julia Hoffman, played to perfection by Grayson Hall, cures some of his vampirism. I might sound vanilla and boring, but I like my Barnabas as a hero. The soap series went on to have our on-again, off-again vampire Barnabas from villain to really the protector of the Collins family. As a matter of fact, he and Julia Hoffman became best friends and went on many adventures together, even through parallel times. Sadly, that Barnabas isn't what we get here, but we do get an ultra, ultra serious take on the franchise's most iconic storyline. So a few of our characters in the movie are Willie Loomis the helpless con man handyman of the Collins family, and the one who figures out where the Collins' fortune is buried inside the family mausoleum. We also have Caroline Stoddard, daughter of Elizabeth and niece to Roger Collins. I always loved this actress on the show, and it's sad to see what happens to her character in this version of Dark Shadows. David Collins, the youngest prankster Collins boy, is here, as well as Elizabeth Collins Stoddard, the matriarch of the Collins family, along with her brother Roger, who live in Collinwood Mansion, which is located atop Willows Hill in Collinsport, Maine. Also on the property, is what they call the Old House, the original mansion that the Collins family owned, which has gone to ruins. We also have Catherine Lee Scott, who plays the second and my favorite of the two main governesses, the iconic original Victoria Winters, <laughs> my name is Victoria Winters, is not seen here. Also, this story's incarnation of Van Helsing is played by Professor Elliot Stokes, who knows all about vampires and the like. We also get many actors from the soap opera as well mixed in, which is always a treat. But now, the story. So Willie is looking for the Collins treasure. 
And David is currently playing a prank on poor Maggie and has run away to hide in the old house. Right off the bat, the film limbs up to its dark title with a lot of darkly filmed scenes. I mean, it does hide a lot of the picture, but at the start of the movie, it definitely adds atmosphere. Willie finds his way into the family mausoleum, where he opens a chained coffin and ends up freeing Barnabas Collins, the 175-year-old vampire who ends up enslaving him with his vampire magic. So I love a scene that happens right around here, where the Collins secretary, Daphne, is attacked while leaving the mansion. I also want you to note that David and Maggie are still out there in the dark. So the family is searching for David, and right before Barnabas can open the door and find Maggie, who's been locked in a room by David, luckily Maggie's boyfriend Jeff finds her and lets her know that he had caught David sneaking back into his room at home. So it couldn't have been him that Maggie just saw opening the door. Hmm. We also have doctor and friend of the family, Julia Hoffman, who specializes in the field of hematology and alternative medicine, and who has taken a sabbatical from her medical profession to spend time collecting a comprehensive history of the Collins family, and is now taking care of the recently attacked Daphne, and states that she's lost a lot of blood. Hmm. At the local bar, The Blue Whale, Caroline and her beau are talking about the attacks when she notices that Willie is there talking to a mysterious man. Next, we see Barnabas overlooking Collinswood in a beautiful dusk shot. I like how they keep him a mystery with the camera behind him. He introduces himself as a cousin from England, and he just so happens to look identical to the original Barnabas Collins in the painting hanging up. Also, nobody seems to know what happened to the original Barnabas after he moved to England. Hmm. Oh, and he comes with gifts, giving Elizabeth the missing jewels from the original Barnabas's mother. Barnabas also wants to know about the old house and possibly fixing it back to its original glory. I guess some time passes because Caroline goes to visit Barnabas, who's now living in the old house, where she sees Willie, who tries to get her to leave before Barnabas can find her. But unfortunately for Caroline, Barnabas is awake. So what happens now is there's like some kind of cousin attraction going on here because Caroline seems to be attracted or deeply curious about good old Barnabas. After she goes back to Collinwood to dress for the evening's costume party, Barnabas attacks her and grabs a quick snack. So Caroline's now under the vampire's spell and can't take her eyes off him. Barnabas now meets Maggie, okay, and she happens to look exactly like Barnabas' long-lost love, Josette. She's even dressed in the original Josette's dress that was found in the mansion, much to Caroline's disgust. So after the party, Barnabas is in a good mood, and he tells Willie that Maggie must be the reincarnation of his lost love, and the story of how he was cursed as a vampire. The original Josette was horrified of the monster he became, so she threw herself off the cliff at Widow's Hill. His father couldn't bear to kill him, so he locked Barnabas in that coffin all those years. Caroline comes in the meantime and tells him that she will tell everyone Barnabas's dirty secret. Secret. Ugh. Sadly, she's killed, and Mrs. Johnson finds her in this very, very eerie scene where she walks back to Collinwood, really half dead. We cut to a funeral for Caroline and get even more 70s horror ambiance with fog, rain, and even more Dark Shadow soap opera cast member cameos. So Julia begins to study samples of the blood from recent victims and explains to Professor Stokes that there is a blood disease found in the samples that can be cured, but he drops the bomb on her. Do you believe in vampires? All the bodies have been drained, and there are no animals that could do that, and strangle their victims as well. Hmm. At this moment, David is playing by himself, saying that if he catches the ball he is bouncing, 
that Caroline will be alive again. I guess it turns out it works because the vampire of his cousin comes to greet him. David runs home into the dining room where everyone is gathered. He tells them that he saw her and Professor Stokes believes him and asks what he did see. He tells the unbelieving group that he believes a vampire is on the loose, warning Todd, who is Caroline's boyfriend, that he is most likely to be next as she will seek him out. Guess what? Todd's attack next. So now Julie is working on the newly drained Todd, who was found wandering around the property. Barnabas is not happy that Caroline attacked him. So that night, Barnabas makes a visit to the family. And while they're talking, Julia begins to look at herself in her compact and notices that Barnabas has no reflection. Ding, 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 ding. Professor Stokes has seemed to get everyone convinced easy enough that vampires exist. Even the police are now carrying around crosses for protection. Jeff is summoned to Caroline, where she begins to feed on him, but is stopped by the police, whom stake and kill her in this bloody scene. Oh, and Elizabeth remains in a comatose state for the rest of the movie, having just lost her only daughter. So brave Dr. Hoffman seeks out Barnabas, saying that the sun is going down to Willie. It must not be too long for him to rise. She tells Barnabas that she can change him into a normal human by targeting the destructive cells in his blood, making Dark Shadows a show and property that has a cure for vampires. That's, I'd say, unique. They use this plot again and again, even during the short-lived 90s reboot and as well as that Tim Burton movie. So the injections begin and Julia seems to have fallen for good old Barnabas, stating that no more recent attacks have led the police and Professor Stokes to believe that the vampire is gone. After hearing that Barnabas wants to give the one he loves Josette's old music box, Dr. Hoffman believes it might be her, but he only has eyes for Maggie Evans, who's grown very fond of him at this point. In fact, they're having dinner and Barnabas dons this very stylish red jacket and he gives her the music box. So don't be fooled by this charm because he later tells Willie that he sent Maggie's boyfriend away for a few days. And after Willie tries to warn Maggie about Barnabas, he gets so angry that he beats poor Willie terribly. Professor Soak seems to still be on track confronting Barnabas in daylight and asking him, even stating that he's not sure how he's done it, but he's walking around in sunlight. It's then he realizes that Julia is in love with the vampire and is helping him, telling Dr. Hoffman that she is a fool and he pities her because he only has eyes for Maggie and she's helping a killer. Barnabas continues to court Maggie and is now able to walk around outside in in the daylight with her. It's actually touching seeing him notice nature and all the things he's missed living in darkness all these centuries. But at the same time, it's always in the back of your head that this is not our friendly neighborhood Barnabas. Hearing Professor Stokes in her head, as well as jealousy, I assume, Julia sabotages the injections and makes Barnabas sick. In matter of fact, it makes Barnabas age into an old, hideous version of himself. When he goes to ask the doctor what is happening, he finds her gathering her stuff to leave, enraged that he was betrayed. He kills Julia, and a train of people come into her room to find her, including Maggie and poor Elizabeth, who comes out of her room finally, only to be further horrified. So biting Maggie's young blood reverses the aging in Barnabas, and he takes Maggie. The remaining Collins and friends try to find her, including Maggie's man who's back in town. One by one, they are killed off, including Professor Stokes and Roger. It is up to Jeff to save his love. He finds an old church where Barnabas, Willie, and Maggie are going to have the most gothic wedding possible. Willie is taken down by a crossbow arrow that was meant for Barnabas, and Jeff is left to witness Maggie being wed to the vampire, when all of a sudden, Barnabas is struck in the back before the final bite. Willie saves the day. 
before dying himself. And we are left with this shot of Barnabas' body during the credits, where at the end, our favorite vampire turns into a bat and flies off. So as stated earlier, I do prefer the heroic Barnabas and the original soap opera, but having a film like this that can give me that Dark Shadows fix in a shorter, easier way is always a pleasure. If anyone hasn't seen the original series or might have just seen the Tim Burton film, I highly recommend you taking a look at this 70s gem. It's available on Amazon and different streaming platforms as well for purchase. There is a sequel as well that does not continue this story, but does continue the story of the Collins family. So pleasant dreams, radical ones. Always remember to look behind you. Never know when the dark shadows falling against the ground might be one of a vampire. <laughs>